To plenty of moviegoers, the term reshoot has become synonymous with bad or making a film worse in some way, and one of the ways this can happen is by killing off a character that otherwise would have survived. Whether this made the films better or worse is quite subjective, really, but either way, for the actor or actress, it's very unfortunate. So I'm Amy from What Culture, and here are 10 movie characters killed in reshoots. Number 10. Dr. Susan McAllister in Deep Blue Sea during the original shoot of classic shark B-movie Deep Blue Sea, apparent protagonist Dr. Susan McAllister made it to the end alive, but when Warner Bros. test screened the film, they discovered a surprising reaction that they hadn't accounted for. As it turns out, test audiences absolutely loathed Susan, seeing her as chiefly responsible for the genetically engineered sharks running amok through the research facility. These audiences desperately wanted to see Susan pay for her runaway ambition in the most ultimate way. According to director Rennie Harlan, one of the test screening feedback forms simply said of Susan, kill the bitch. And so, a brief reshoot was conducted in which Susan was brutally devoured by a shark. Harlan also claims that he cut some of Susan's more sympathetic moments throughout the film to make her seem even more icy and ensure that her death was more cathartic. In the end, her death did turn out to be a genuinely shocking moment and, to most audiences, incredibly satisfying. 9. Max Nurek in I Know What You Did Last Summer Johnny Galecki has a small role in I Know What You Did Last Summer as protagonist Julie James's friend, Max. Max actually becomes an early suspect for the figure terrorising Julie and her ill-fated friends, but as we know, he was innocent. Originally, this suspicion is as far as things went, but when the film was test-screened, director Jim Gillespie realised that there was a massive lack of violence in the movie's first half. Following the initial fatal car accident, it was kind of bland, and the hook-wielding killer hadn't been established as a serious threat in time. And so, Gillespie decided to shoot an additional scene where Max is brutally murdered in the first act, making sure we remember that killer and their signature hook by having him impaled through the throat. Considering it's a further 35 minutes before the next death, this was most certainly a smart call, ensuring that the gorehounds didn't get too restless sitting around. Gillespie further said that the killing of Max at the end of the first act bought him more time to tell a story and not worry about the long chasm of time without a death, so you can't fault the logic, really. 8. Val in Solo, A Star Wars Story this is an interesting one that's a little bit different from the other reshoots. In Solo, Thandie Newton appears as criminal Tobias Beckett's wife, Val, and she ends up sacrificing herself to help Tobias, Han, and co escape, blowing herself up during their botched coaxium heist. Yet, Val's death wasn't actually a part of the script at all, and only came about due to an estimated 70% of the film being reshot by Ron Howard after Phil Lord and Chris Miller exited the project. When Howard was speeding through the reshoots, it was decided that there just wasn't enough time to film Val's original scene, in which she would fall into a vacuum of space during the heist, leaving her fate ambiguous. Instead, it was deemed simpler to just kill her off at the heist, and that be that. Newton recently expressed vocal disapproval of the decision to kill off the first major black female character in a Star Wars movie so hastily. Considering that she signed up for a different final scene that would have allowed her to return in a sequel, can you really blame her? 7. Dr. Loomis in Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers if you know anything at all about the sixth Halloween film, The Curse of Michael Myers, you'll be aware that its production was a big old mess, with the original cut being received disastrously by test audiences. In the original version of the film, which is now referred to as the producer's cut, Michael Myers passes the curse of the thorn, you know, the curse that makes him kill, to his longtime nemesis, Dr. Loomis. However, this cut of the movie just didn't land right with test audiences, who were reportedly mostly teenage boys, and so a round of extensive reshoots was conducted many months later. Sadly, by this time the great Donald Pleasance had actually passed away, and so the production was at something of a loss when deciding an alternate fate for his character. As a result, Loomis just sort of semi-randomly disappears out of the film at regular intervals, and one of the new scenes concocted in reshoots was the very final scene where we linger on a shot of Michael's mask as Loomis can be heard screaming in the background. The implication is very clearly that Michael kills Loomis, even if it's unavoidably unsatisfying that we never actually see this happening. But despite the dissatisfaction, I think we all have to admit it's a damn sight better than having him be possessed. 6. All the remaining survivors in Dawn of the Dead 2004 Zack Snyder's surprisingly good Dawn of the Dead remake originally ended with the survivors fleeing Milwaukee on a yacht as the infected Michael stays behind and shoots himself. Test audiences found this end too jarringly abrupt, though, and so Snyder decided to shoot a found footage style segment to be tacked onto the movie's end credits. Whilst principal photography took place in Toronto, this sequence was shot in California and depicted the survivors running out of supplies, riding their yacht to an island, and then being overrun by zombies. At the end of the sequence, the camcorder drops to the floor and 
and whilst we don't explicitly see the heroes die, the implication is there. It would have been nigh on impossible for the rescue strapped survivors to fend off such a large horde of the undead, and so anyone who stuck around for the end credits got a decidedly bleaker ending than those who booked it as soon as they started rolling. 5. Max and Elise in Suicide Kings 1997's cult crime comedy Suicide Kings follows a group of young men who kidnap a former mobster, Charlie Bennett, in an attempt to fund the ransom for one of the kidnapper's sisters, Elise. At the end of the movie, however, it's revealed that one of the young men, Max, was in on Elise's kidnap from the start, and better yet, both he and Elise set up the whole thing just to claim the ransom for themselves. The film ends with Charlie tracking the pair down and having his bodyguard shoot them both dead. However, this was actually a reshoot, as the two endings shot before this didn't go down well with audiences. One ending or Charlie let the couple live, but take most of their scammed money back, and in the other, the bodyguard shoots holes in the boat and leaves it to sink. Test audiences felt strongly that the couple deserved to perish for their sins, and so director Peter O'Fallon went back to shoot this more gratifying addendum. 4. Rick Johnson in A Nightmare on Elm Street 4 The Dream Master the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise is full of creatively bizarre and disarming death scenes, though one of the low-key weirdest ones is that of Rick Johnson in the fourth movie. Late on in the film, Rick has a dream where an invisible Freddy attacks him at a dojo. Rick, being a martial arts enthusiast, puts up a solid fight, though after knocking Freddy's glove off his hand, the glove levitates and flies into his chest, stabbing him to death. Fascinatingly, there's a very specific reason that Freddy's invisible in this scene, and that's because Rick's death was a last-minute decision added during reshoots, at a time in which Robert England just wasn't available. So some genius made the creative call that we could just, I don't know, make Freddy invisible and we don't need England at all. Thankfully, the fantastical nature of the various dream sequences has always given a ton of latitude for improvisation, and so Rick's death actually fits perfectly into the fabric of the story. Don't get me wrong, we'll never turn down seeing a bit more Freddy, but his absence in one scene, eh, it's not gonna kill anyone, any audience members at least. 3. Fred Wilson in King Kong 1976 in the 1976 King Kong remake, the primary antagonist is Fred Wilson, the greedy oil magnate ultimately responsible for Kong's rampage through New York City, as played so deliciously by the late, great Charles Grodin. Wilson ends up getting his satisfying comeuppance when Kong breaks loose during the film's climax. He trips over and is stepped on by Kong, killing him instantly. However, Grodin has confirmed in interviews that Wilson was originally supposed to survive the events of the film, but once test audiences got their oar in and demanded justice, a small additional of him being stepped on was shot. This is definitely a case where the test audiences got it right. Seeing Wilson get stomped flat is enormously cathartic given his horrible, selfish, reckless actions throughout the movie. Plus, there's never a time where seeing a horrible oil man get stepped on by a big monkey is not going to be good. 2. El Diablo in Suicide Squad it's no secret at all what a mess Suicide Squad's production was, with Warner Bros. heavily tinkering with the ensemble superhero epic during post-production. Of the many head-scratching decisions made in post, though, the oddest might be killing off one of the more likeable and interesting lower-tier squad members, El Diablo. Diablo perishes in the final battle against Incubus and his sister Enchantress, sacrificing himself to keep Incubus in place when a bomb explodes, annihilating them both. But back in 2020, director David Ayer confirmed on Twitter that Diablo originally survived the climax, and his death was consequently added in reshoots. Considering Diablo's tricky, intriguing character arc, having accidentally killed his family by losing control of his pyrokinetic powers, sort of like an opposite Elsa from Frozen with a bit more death, defeating the Incubus could have been a much-needed moment of redemption for him, and yet evidently somebody, whether that was Ayer or Warner Bros, felt that he needed to die for his prior sins. In the scale of things, though, we won't worry about this one too much. It's just one of Suicide Squad's many, many mistakes. One. Robert Neville in I Am Legend over a decade later, this one still pisses people off. I Am Legend is an infamous post-apocalyptic thriller in which a virologist, called Robert Neville, is apparently the only remaining human on Earth. He's pursued throughout the film by cannibalistic mutants known as Darkseekers, and at the end of the story, he sacrifices himself, running towards the attacking Darkseekers whilst holding a live grenade, in order to preserve a cure he thought they were about to destroy. Did you know, though, that this was a reshoot, and deviated hugely from the ending of the original book it was based on? Test audiences hated the more source-faithful original ending, wherein Neville realises that the Darkseekers are far more intelligent and emotionally engaged than he believes, and that they view him as a monster for his experiments upon them. The original ending is definitely more thought-provoking, asking you to contemplate your own misjudgments, try and see things from a different perspective, and predictably, this is something that test audiences didn't want to engage with. They recoiled at it for its thoughtfulness and moral ambiguity, and instead they made poor Francis Lawrence shoot a whole new ending with much less emotional impact.
And on that note, we've reached the end of this list of 10 movie characters killed in reshoots. Have we missed any good ones? Let us know in the comments down below. And remember to check out whatculture.com for more lists and articles like this every single day. As always, I've been Amy from What Culture, and I'll catch you next time.